Welcome to the Amphigory Effect podcast with your host, Zach Brackett, and your co host, Justin Marlowe. Let's begin. Uh, really? <laughs> Does it? Oh, yeah, for she, a couple of She's like, when they win the race. Yeah, she's think, the one. Uh, that, we'll be going for it. A couple other people do yeah. that. Wow. They were famous. Well, yeah. Because when they walk up, they say, uh, Is that your mom out there? And she goes, Whoopee, or whatever. Yeah. That's her name. Really? Yeah, it's funny for oh. like a second. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to the Amphigory Effect Podcast. I am your host, Zach Brackett, and sitting across from me is Justin Marlowe. Justin, say hello to the world. Hello world, how are you? <laughs> um, we have a special guest here today. We have Brogan Gaskell here today. Hello. How are you? I'm doing well, man. Yeah? Doing well. I'm so yeah. happy to have you out here, man. Thank you guys for having me, seriously. Before we jump in to what this awesome guy does, we want to give a shout out to the board that he's covering up with his humongous oh, self. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> um, we, if we get 10 patron members or 50 YouTube subscribers, I will let the guys plastic dip my car and we'll put it all over YouTube. Uh, so that's the gist of it. We're about uh, halfway there already, right? Yeah. Tonight? Links are below. Awesome. We got 25 YouTube subscribers and four patron members. So thank you guys so much for your support so far. But let's jump into this today. Brogan. What do you do, man? Why are you interesting oh, enough to come on this awesome show? I don't know <laughs> if I am interesting enough That's to come on true. this That's awesome show. Um, I guess I I like putting out music yeah. and um, I love writing music and and producing and and recording and I guess that's why you guys have me. I guess. Yeah, yeah, Maybe. that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when when did you first start playing? Like, when was the first time you're like, I want to do this? Oh man, um, I guess. It kind of stems back from the the family I have on my dad's side. They yeah. would always get together and um, just play music together. Um, e- each person would take turns and, and just play a different song. That's cool. I grew up with that a little bit. And then so I would grab my fake guitar and <laughs> it, I wasn't playing any chords. I was literally just strumming um, and, and just sing when I was really little. And then I I guess I... I got more and more interested into it seriously when it came to the end of high school and and, okay. and college and I didn't think I could ever record something or put it out there but with some friends and with some resources I figured it out and it's been really fun man really really fun yeah that's awesome um so like I, I come from a similar background with my family cool. yeah we used to sit around big circles and just pass yeah, instruments around that's yeah, the best it's, it's you guys really are hippies fun. man <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe that's yeah, what yeah. we're saying here yeah but it's awesome um I I've listened to a lot of music. I know you from school. We met at school. Yes. We had yes. Uh, English 291, <laughs> like the intro to English Man, or whatever together. What a class. What yeah, a class. that was great. That was great. <laughs> um, but I, I looked you up and, and I was like, man, this guy can sing. You can sing, man. And, nah. and your voice, and you guys will hear this because he's going to sing on the show, teaser to the end. So stay tuned <laughs> to the end. Um, but he, uh, he, his, your voice doesn't really match. Your uh, your I get I don't know how to say it without sounding. No, it's certain. okay. It's okay. <laughs> you know no, I mean, it's though. totally fine. I uh, I'm just a, a long lanky dude, and uh, <laughs> I don't know. I guess it. So, some people are a little surprised. I'm not sure, um, but I In feel like way. I'm screaming a little bit sometimes. No, no, but no, it's really good. <laughs> um, so you is guitar your main thing? Is that what you do? It's tough. Um, I I played. It's coming up on two years where I've just started playing the guitar and. Um, Wait, you've only been playing guitar for two years. Yeah, yeah. It, I hate you. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> a lot I've of got some questions now. <laughs> <laughs> you got anything? Yeah, like uh, I just started playing a couple weeks really? ago. I'm Very really, cool. really, really, really cool. bad. But no, like, don't, how do don't you, how do yourself. I be good? <laughs> What's the trick, man? Uh, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm I'm stuck on uh, like the C chord. That's okay. And, and D minor. I could not play the C chord for a long time, and it frustrated me. Um, because I think almost every single song known yeah. to man. Yeah. So you have really, like, you have like, like, what's your, what's your, tr- what was your training regimen? Like if you've gotten so good so fast, you must be doing something right. No, I, man, I, I think it, I've always wanted to play gu- the guitar. I, I kind of see it as like a missionary's instrument a little bit. You can take it anywhere. Right. I feel like it, when you start playing, whether you're good or bad, people kind of gather around the guitar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so I started playing and I was determined Despite how bad I was starting off, I, I really wanted to learn it. And so it was, I guess, a strict regimen, if you want to call it that. Um, but I, I loved it. And, and just figuring out, oh, the C chord, I got it down once. I, uh, hopefully I can do that again. And and so the first summer, it was just every single day trying to build up calluses, which is sometimes yep, the hardest part. That is. And I, I did not realize how hard you had to press down <laughs> on the strings. And um, 
Did you uh, did you start on acoustic? Started on acoustic, yeah. And so I actually have not got an electric guitar. I I just oh, I'm yeah? interested in the folk sound really? a little okay. bit. So yeah, and we'll definitely come back to that. But we talked a little bit before the show. You play guitar left-handed, yes. but you're not actually left-handed. So how'd that come about? Well, when I was 14, I had an accident with my fingers, and I lost two fingertips oh, man. on my left hand, my middle, and my, I guess, is this the... That's the ring finger. The ring yeah. finger, yeah. ring finger, yeah. And um, oddly enough, it was with the fish tank it came down and um, really? crushed, oh crushed those two fingers. Man, that's crazy. Um, my dad's in the fish tanks, got a 400-gallon fish tank, came down, um craziness a little bit but yeah. um i really wanted to learn like i was telling you i i started with the ukulele really soft strings and i thought i could end up trying to master that i didn't really master that at all but um one day i don't know who brought it up but we were thinking through it and we were like why don't we just try a, a left-handed guitar just to see what what would happen and so i ended up having to switch my brain up a little bit yeah, trying to get the weird. strumming patterns down with my left hand instead of my right but the nice thing was my right hand was more i guess the dexterity and it was right that was makes better sense. and so chords came a little easier i think that was part of it as well um because my right hand was more used to to playing the piano and being stretched out and so that's what happened and by god's grace he allowed me to keep playing and that's awesome it's really yeah, cool that's i think amazing. that's that's a real testament to like your desire to play <laughs> yeah. is that i was telling you before like i i tried when i when i first started I actually went did you take any lessons at all i didn't no really i didn't, I didn't take any lessons Man, i took lessons how did you learn yeah parents? just just trying to do it by myself looking up images of chords on google and yeah. just a lot of a lot of pain and practice, I yeah, guess. Yeah, that's really cool. I took lessons yeah. not for very long, um, but when I went, I tried to play left-handed because I have this weird thing where I write right-handed but play sports left, so wow. I don't really know what's going on. Man, that, you're a psycho. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's weird. My parents didn't make me pick no, that's one, amazing. so I just did whatever. That's very cool. Um, but they made me play right-handed because they said it'd be a lot easier to yep. do. And so I think you're right. When you're starting out, it's it's a little bit easier to either pick one or the other, but I, that's still crazy to me that that you picked that up that's awesome thanks man yeah i really appreciate it um back to your style of music yeah. um it's got a lot of uh folk tones and a lot of christian themes and stuff like that especially the songs that you write yeah and, um so tell us a little bit more about where that inspiration comes from oh man um i want to say it was around sophomore year of high school where i really started to get into folk music a little bit more and and definitely more of the popular folk music. My dad got me a Mumford and Sons album, nice. Side No More. Nice. That was the first folk album I ever listened to. And I just remember being captivated by it, especially um, for some reason when I got it, I, I went to the last song just to hear what it would be like. And it was after the storm, and that song just kind of struck me. And after that, I was kind of hooked. Yeah. Started listening to it more and more. And there's something really pure about folk music where you don't have a lot of digital um, editing and, and digital mm -hmm. sounds and something, something about the characteristic of it um, really intrigued me. And, and so I started listening more and more trying to figure out how in the world could I implement that into something I'm creating without trying to copy anyone. Right. And so you pick up a lot of things from different artists. Um, we were talking about the Avett brothers. Yeah, There's yeah. a lot of walk ups and walk downs in their songs and, and trying to, to convey that in your own stuff. Um, but I think I, I grew up in the church and um, this, this might sound awful, but for, for a lot of my youth, I, I couldn't stand Christian music okay. and praise music because there's something about it that, and I don't want to doubt the sincerity of it at all, but it didn't connect um, with me, I can see that the the type of sounds and the the type of of worship music there was, and so started listening to these other artists like Josh Garrels or mm -hmm. um, even King's Kaleidoscope, which isn't folk, um, but you even get into the John Mark McMillans and and some artists like that, where you see a lot of passion right. and and a lot of work. Um, uh, Josh Garrels produced one of his or probably several of his albums in his home, and wow. um, you you hear the heartfelt message behind it and and so i wanted to to convey something that would would draw people to god but i wanted to do it in a way that would be different than what you're hearing yeah. on the radio and and just my affinity for folk music kind of bled over into that so i think yeah. it's really really cool and i i can definitely 
feel the sincerity that I, I noticed true. too because I've listened to a lot of Christian music. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. Um, and again, not knocking it at the same time, but it's you. Sometimes it feels more like a show than than actual like meaningful, impactful music. Especially when you get big worship groups that sing For a lot sure. of the same songs. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's awesome, man. That that you you blended those two together so great, and uh, I, I think that's really really cool. Thanks, man. Yeah, it, it's um, it, it's interesting the way the music industry becomes a little bit of a machine too, and yeah, and I I've not felt any of that. Um, because I'm just still making albums in my You'll my house. And <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. So you do know. it in your in your house right now? It, as of right now, the first the first album I ever recorded was was split between the BCM and my house, nice. just recording there. And so you got AC. I had yeah, AC. You got yes. AC. You got to step <laughs> up on us. The amenities of the BCM building. I'm yeah. no, very <laughs> thankful for Jack, and then um, just allowed me to come in and, and mess around and. I don't know, man. I had no idea what I was doing. Still don't really know what I'm, I'm doing. So so what's the <laughs> process like? Because I only know iTunes and yeah. the album from the podcast side. Yeah, yeah. So so you sit at home and you have you have a studio? I have a little bit of uh, portable, I guess, cords and microphones. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. really cool. So <laughs> so let's say you, uh, you sit down and you make an album. Uh, so you produce it all yourself and you do all the work and all of that. Um, what's your process then of getting it out to the world? Man, um, there were several outlets, I guess, I looked into and I asked friends who had done it before. And, right. and eventually I was led to TuneCore.com and not to do a plug, but TuneCore.com is amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and it's really, really simple. You you just have to convert the files to a WAV file, okay. um, uh, line it up, put a release date on it, uh, album art, I guess, and covers, which I'm very thankful to have people like Shelby Spencer and Emily Morbido who have really produced some awesome pictures yeah, and, and album really art for good, that. Yeah. And, um, and then you just set the date, you pay, I think $20 for an album, um, and seem too bad. for a year. And then the next year it renews and it's a, it's 50 each year after that, but still to, to, yeah, yeah. to retain it. And, and so, so they put easy. it out everywhere then. Yep. You can select the stores. Um, and usually I just try to select, um, as much as I can just to right. get it out on yeah, all that's outlets. What, that's cool. what we do too, yeah. It's really easy. Everywhere we can put it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, At this point, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So your latest album was uh, Tribulations. Yes. Right? Yeah, and um, I really like the artwork on it, and I've noticed a theme of, like, there's water and woods yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, uh, Because I've seen the, um, I can't remember the name of the last one I saw, but you were standing on a bridge or something. Yeah, looking out on yeah, the water. yeah. Yeah, that was really cool. Um, so what is, what's your inspiration for this one this album specifically oh, that's that's hard yeah. um i considering the album cover that's that's a picture from shelby spencer who's shelby spencer photography another plug yeah. very very talented um goes to winthrop and i think she shot that at in the mountains somewhere i've always been kind of obsessed with nature and and for some reason after i had gotten through all the songs i saw that picture and it really struck me because you you have something like this, these light colors contrasting with this dark iciness. It was a reflection on a lake, actually. Yeah, yeah. And, and in some ways, that reflects that in the cold and in this kind of bitter atmosphere, there's still light, there's still a reflection of some hope there. And that's what Tribulations became a little bit of. I started off um, with an old hymn that that um, I have decided to follow Jesus mm -hmm. to start off. And, and then right after that, I feel like a lot of times when we are um, pursuing him and, and wanting to surrender to him, things get really hard because yeah. we are sinful. We live in a, in a fallen world. And, and so the next song um, really hit home. It was a song called, called Blay. And that's about my grandfather who just passed away recently this past November, I believe. And it really, really made our, our family distraught in a lot of ways. And it was written before he passed away just to my dad to give him some hope. Um, he, he, he had a stroke over in Ireland and he was stuck over there in the hospital oh, when we went and, um, and eventually we got him back here. And, and once he was finally in Rock Hill, just a, a few days later, he, he passed and he was an incredible man. And I wanted to do, um, something to, to kind of honor him in that. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. And so, um, and then it goes through, um, you have songs like a wretched man and, and Psalm 51, which is kind of st taken straight out of scripture. Um, wretched man referring to, to Paul writing in, in his letters and, and just saying, like, I do the things that I hate. 
and and this this battle between good and and evil and yourself and and then um songs like the west coast was written in high school actually and so oh, really? it's been in the works a little bit i always enjoyed playing it was about a friend of mine that that took off um to the west coast to, to go to school there and i think um family life was hard and it was difficult for her and i wanted to, to capture that in a song and and then you kind of see this this upturn a little bit um because it's, it's a little bit in a way shaped like a valley when you're going through the album um, I always wanted to create an album that you could listen to all the way through and get some co type of cohesive message. And um, it turns a little bit with songs like Teresa, which is about my mom and her walk of faith. And then my friend um, Ben, who has been an incredible um, influence on my life. I was captivated by his story and testimony and, and the way God worked through him. So I titled the song Benjamin. And, and then I think it ends with On Our Way. Is that right? Yeah, that's, that's right. terrible. Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah, I have it right. <laughs> um, but it, that's a song of hope, and um, that that's what I wanted to end on. Throughout the the trials and tribulations of life, there's this hope that we can hang on to, and that's the last taste in your mouth type thing that I wanted to to leave people with. I don't even know if people listen to it all the way through, oh, but man. but I'm hoping I'm hoping the message came clear in that. So yeah, I think you have a great vision for. Um, because, because if I was putting together an album, <laughs> I'd probably just throw songs I'd liked in there. You yeah, know, you're yeah. a hack, though. Zach. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. sure. I just say, oh, this is no. catchy. Put it, put it in there. But I think that's so cool that like the album itself has an arc. Like it, the album is a story, and yeah. I think that's really, really cool. That Thanks, is awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Seriously, just a forethought. <laughs> yeah, I know. I would never have like, thought oof. to do that. So, Brogan, where do you want? Where do you want these albums to go, right? Where's your dreams? Give us your dreams, oh, man. man. Are, you, are you just making music because you enjoy it, or do you? Is it is it like a financial goal man. in mind? I think it's tough. Personally, I the Lord provides a lot of songs, and and I'm constantly wanting to write and and have ideas in my head and keep a lot of ideas on my notes and my phone, um, um, and so. For me, it's just cool to have it out there, and and literally just to see an an album finished is incredible, because it, it does take a while. And the first the first one especially, because um, when I started, I I really just started playing guitar, and I had no idea what I was gonna do and and how I was gonna finish it. And there were numerous takes on that to get it slightly okay um, <laughs> to sound all right. And, and so just to see that and, and then the response from people has been really cool. And I, I've, I've prayed before um, each album and, and just asked that, that whoever would hear it would hear it. And I think you can get caught up in numbers and, and mm -hmm. who in the world is going to be able to, um, I guess, notice you. And, but at the same time, I, I feel like there's this providence in that the right people will hear it if they're supposed to hear it. Um, but then there's the desire in you that there's there's certain messages that you want a lot of people to hear. And so putting it out on outlets, it kind of affords an opportunity for for people all across the globe to hear it if they want to. There was a weird time I put out a Christmas, Christmas album and I think people in Sweden were really listening to it. And I have no idea why. That's awesome. Uh, it was very strange. And, and so uh, concerning aspirations, um, right now, I just enjoy writing and, and making it and recording. The recording process is so much fun. It's one of the most frustrating um, things to do, um, but it's so much fun. And, and, and monetarily, it's been really cool. The first album, all the proceeds were going to, um, to write Love on Our Arms, which is an organization that raises awareness and treatment for like, um, teenage suicide and depression and, and alcohol abuse and, and self-harm. And then the second one, the proceeds went to an organization called Love Africa, uh, which is a, a mission organization that goes to to um, Kenya and, and Zambia, I believe, over in Africa. And then I think, I'm trying to think with all of them, I think Tribulations as well went to Love Africa. And then starting with, I released two singles um, back in April. Uh, back in April, that was last month. Back in April, um, and, and, way back, <laughs> and and those were starting with those, and Lord willing, with more um, stuff. The proceeds are just going to go to my church, and uh, um, I guess uh, we've been searching for a permanent home, and and the Lord's moved recently, which is really cool. Um, but we are a church plant, and and so trying to raise money for that, 
has been um, just a humbling experience. And so I felt in some ways that God provided these songs so much that I couldn't take ownership of them in the sense of where like the money and it almost feels weird and, and gross a little bit to, to take it. And I, I completely understand why artists are, are taking the money that they make, um, especially because uh, on these digital distribution websites, really, you're not getting a lot. Um, Spotify could send you a check for a couple cents um, because streams just just don't get a lot of, of money and, and revenue. And, and and so you're really looking more at like album sales. And, and, and that's why these artists are, are touring so much. And, and you see the, the amount of nights that they're playing each year going up because that's where they get the majority of their money. And so for me, uh, I've played a couple gigs lately, um, but I don't know what I enjoy more. It's probably the gigs, but just, just having the time to do it um, is hard. So um, I become a little bit of a hermit when I start <laughs> creating these these albums, if you want to call them that. And um, my family puts up with me. I'm very thankful for them. Thank you, mom and dad. <laughs> and um, just for, for affording me the space and the time. And and whenever there's a break from school, I'm I'm kind of itching. To, to get at it right now i'm I'm recording some stuff hoping to put it out this summer and i've already got other stuff lined up thematically but after that just because i don't know i just am constantly trying to write and it might be quantity over quality who knows but um just just trying to to put out there i have this sense of urgency um because this might be one of the few times in my life where i have the time and the the amount yeah, of that's, space that's kind of yeah. what i was wondering is i mean I think it's great that that you're creating and I would hate to see you <laughs> have to stop. Yeah. And I w we're kind of in a similar situation where if we want to take this podcast beyond where it lies yeah. right now, there's going to have to be some kind of monetary incentive for us Definitely. whether it's g greedy or not. It, that's oh, no, just the true. reality of it. Yeah. So I'm just wondering what is your what is your plan besides music? Man, um I don't know. I, I, I do have plans and it, it's tough. I, I feel like God's revealed that a lot of times plans can just be squashed and for certain reasons. Um, but at the same time, uh, I've been leading worship at my church for two years and uh, as a paid position um, on staff there, um, which feels really weird. But um, I understand there's more responsibility with a paid position and um, you, it's immense it and it's been a huge blessing. But um, I've got two more years of college. Hopefully I can get through that. And, uh, and after that, I'm thinking about seminary. Um, not sure where yet, and it depends on the state of the church. Um, hopefully it'd be cool if there was a full-time position um, at that point. But we are a young church, and, and so there's a little bit of a plan. Music is, is definitely a part of that, I think. I don't ever want to give it up. Um, I love telling stories through songs. That's one of my favorite things to do. Um, I feel like we're lacking that a lot and and some of the music we're hearing today or the stories just are are not too good to yeah, hear yeah and so i i completely agree i think there will come a point where there's a standoff where you have to realize um there you have to just to support yourself and especially if you have a family um monetary um expenses and and things like that are going to come into play and so um right now there's a freedom to to give it away but i might not have that freedom for a long time right yeah and me and justin were talking about this a lot like there comes a point especially when you're working full time <laughs> that it's either like <laughs> uh put more into this thing yep. that you don't really make that much money from or any money or keep working your full-time job you, you know what i mean yes. and, that, and that's hard and i think that's the hardest thing about creating anything yep. um is that is that kind of standoff you reach yeah the robots just haven't taken over yet <laughs> yeah we just don't have the free time we need yeah cross our fingers for that day um so if you don't mind can we hear some of your music i that'd would, be, I would cool? love to man yeah, awesome for sure. okay well this is a song uh that's almost three years old which makes me feel really old um and this is on uh, an album that i released last summer called faith and romanticism and I hope you like it. It's called Seasons. Well, it was a June day when I fell in love. Fell 
straight on my face Couldn't rise back above But I leak these wounds That I have left from you And faces blended in With the bare blue sky And I came back around And I heard that you cried Where to say I didn't too Well I would be alive my dear We were sitting by the fire that summer night Said come in close I'll show you my eyes So I took a deep glance And I was paralyzed that night And I watched the sun fall out of sight And I watched the moon as it faded into night And I watched your eyes Stare right back into mine And I watch the sea Roll back into the tide And I watch the leaves Go to its time And I watch you with me As I hear you tight Oh, I've seen your face before In the afternoon light I've seen your face before The tears formed in your eyes Oh, I've seen this place Yes, I've seen this place before Oh, I felt loneliness While surrounded by a crowd I've heard silence Be so long and be so loud Oh, I've seen happiness Oh, it's here somewhere, somewhere Oh, I've seen heartbreak on a person's face And I've seen heartbreak where I was much too late I've seen these things in the mirror in my room So I watched the sky turn into a cloudy gray And I watched as the birds flew to a better place And maybe I'll have wings Maybe I'll have wings someday Whoa. Stepping into the flame would just lead to burns Now you know my words Yes, this is my concern, my dear And I watch the days go longer in its light And I watch God's grace touch many people's lives And I watch my blame roll down with the tears I cry Yeah, I watch my brain roll down with the tears I cry. There you go. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, this guy's amazing. I'll put his link to the YouTube and his album and all that. Go follow him, do all that stuff. And please remember to like, comment, subscribe on this video. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next week. Buy his album, cool. guys. It's incredible. <laughs> really good. See you guys. Bye. Wow. Oh, oh my man. god, you're good. No, no, no. <laughs>